Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, we're gonna continue with the lighthouse. Today is the final day of the lighthouse in this week, uh, tomorrow, Saturday, and uh, Sunday. We're gonna be talking about some of the new features inside of Seaverse 2022. So hopefully you guys stick around for those ones as well. Probably gonna be shorter videos, and then next week we keep going with our traditional uh, tutorials. So if you haven't checked it out, Alejandro released one of his tutorials uh, yesterday. So make sure to go back into the channel. And if you are a complete beginner to, to Blender, you wanna learn it completely from scratch, you know nothing about it, and you wanna go like easy and simple with some basic uh, interface things, main tools and stuff, that's gonna be the best video you can get. So check out the other one on the channel, and and yeah, let's keep going. So today, guys, I want to show you a nice little trick. So we're going to be combining like several elements over here, uh, which is, first of all, the uh, net. And for that specific net, we're actually going to be using something called Encloth. So um, before we do that, though, we need to get a net material. And unfortunately, I was I was looking around uh, in the internet, and there's some like very nice materials like this one right here. Um, there's like this one right here, but you need to pay for it. So it's like $6. Uh, this one, there's no uh, link to buy it or anything. So unfortunately, this is one of those things that gets a little bit tricky or could get a little bit tricky. Uh, my best advice is if you can get just a, like a traditional alpha and, and work with that one, that should be fine. Like we're not going to model the, the net. It will be like bonkers to try to model the net because it will be just too much geometry. So in my case, I actually went to Substance um, uh, Source and I got this one, which is a chain fence. And I'm going to show you how we can transform this one or at least get it closer to um, a more like traditional uh, rope uh, net, okay? So we're, we're gonna be using Substance Street Painter. This is like a super hacky way to do it. Like I know uh, there is um, Substance Designer, which I think I've mentioned before, if you guys want me to um, get into that one and maybe do a couple of tutorials about that one, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to do some research, research, eh, research and, and give it to you guys. So I'm gonna go here into Open Sample and we're gonna open this Tiling Material Sample. And this tiling material is great because this one is specifically designed so that you can see how materials are gonna be tiling. So I'm gonna delete everything here. I don't need any layer. And then I downloaded this one right here. So let me go into my folder and I'm just gonna drag and drop it. That's probably one that I'm gonna be using quite a bit. So I'm gonna import it to my library. There we go. So now if I were to drag and drop this one right here, you're gonna see that we have this, which is uh, just the basic tiling texture. Now you can see that the UV is not the same size. The reason is over here, we actually have like, uh, nine planes sharing the same UV, and that's why we're able to see this sort of like a transparency. Now, for us to see the transparency, I'm gonna go to texture set settings, and on the channels, we're gonna have to add an opacity channel. So over here, oh, actually, we're gonna have to go to the materials first, and on the materials, we're gonna change this material to this PBR Metal Rough Alpha Test. So there's two types of uh, opacity. I'm not sure if I mentioned this one before in the series, but there's two types. The first one is this one, which is like a cutout, so you just like black and white, uh, visible, non-visible, and then, or the other way around, black is non-visible, white is visible, and then we also have the PBR uh, with alpha blending. So this is a little bit better for like hair and plants and stuff, where you wanna have like a little fade and you don't want things to be just like a, like a complete cutout. So I'm gonna use this one in this case because we, we do, don't care about like the, the softness, we want this to be like a harsh net. And here on the chain, it's important that we turn on, uh, wait a second, let me delete this one. Do we not have opacity? Oh wait, no, okay. We have the alpha test, now we go to texture set settings, sorry. We go here, click, and now we add the opacity channel. There we go. So now you can see that um, the software is automatically detecting that this guy is uh, doing this sort of effect where we're just like cutting through it, right? Now here's where we need to find a way to give it a little bit more like a, like a rope texture because right now it's very plasticky. And eventually when we export these textures, uh, these textures are just gonna be tileable and we're just gonna be able to position them where we want. So I'm gonna look for, um, I don't think we have a rope texture. Actually, I'm not sure why I didn't look for rope. Maybe if I had looked for rope, we would have gotten something. Okay, so we have this fishing rope pile. No, see, unfortunately we don't have like any specific one. We have this fishing net, but it's just like a, like a bundle of, so if you have like a, this very organic shape, you could have it. Uh, I mean, we can download this one. It's another like rope element. And it's not gonna really be that useful for what we want. If you remember, we already did something like this with the uh, with the ropes like in the in the first couple of chapters. But let me grab this as a base material, import it to the library, and now if we drag and drop this on top of the of the uh, elements here. You're gonna see that we get this. Now uh, we have height information, or actually we have displacement information. So I'm gonna go down here and disable displacement. I don't want displacement. And now we have this. So as you can see, I mean, it's not it's not horrible. It's a little bit better because at least we have like the sort of like texture feel to it. 
Uh, but yeah, the titling is way, way too bad. So I'm going to go up here to the scale and let's say like 10. And you can see that's a little bit better. The only thing I'm a little bit worried or concerned about is the direction because as you can see, it's, it's not going in the direction that I might want. So we can try doing like a, there we go, like something like this. Now, it, it's not going to be perfect, right? Because some of these lines are going to be going properly and the other ones are not going to be going properly. Uh, but as you can see, it's not bad. It's not, it's not bad. It, it, it kind of looks okay. Now here I'm gonna show you a nice little uh, secret inside of uh, inside of substance, which are called anchor points. So as you can see here, one of the issues that I'm seeing is that there is no depth in between the two little like connections. Like there's no shadow in between them, and that might make it look a little bit fake. So if I want to add a little bit of dirt over there, uh, your initial thought might be, well, we can just like a like a rust fine. Let's say here, let's turn this into like overlay so that it's darker, and I'm gonna add a black mask, and I'm gonna add a dirt layer or a dirt generator. Which, yeah, this is going to completely work for what we want. But unfortunately, it's not like really giving me that like sharp line that I'm going for. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here to the chain fence. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create something called an anchor point. And an anchor point, it's a fancy way of saying get information from this layer. OK, so so we're using the anchor point to to gather information about the layers that live inside this uh, specific layer or the, the channels that live inside this specific layer. So I'm just going to add the anchor point. I'm just going to call it chain fence. No need to do anything else. It's just, again, it's just like a reference point for uh, substance. And I'm going to go into dirt. And down here, I'm going to go into micro detail. And I'm going to turn on micro height and micro normal, both of them on. Then I'm going to go all the way down here. And you're going to have the new channels, micro normal and micro height. You're going to click here and you're going to go into the anchor point and hit chain fence. And then click here, go into the anchor point and hit the chain fence as, as again. And what this is doing, it, it's going into that channel right here. It, it's, it's referencing this channel and it's going to, again, extract information from it. So in the micro normal, I want to reference, of course, at the normal map. As you can see, look at that. We start getting some dirt in the crevices. And then on the height, we can also do the same thing. So hide map. And now, as you can see, we are going to be getting a little bit of extra dirt here and there. And we can go back to the generator and play around with how much of this we actually want. Not that much. I'm going to get rid of the grunge amount because the grunge is, is like really contaminating everything else. I'm going to push the dirt level a little bit higher like this. And then, of course, we can bring the overlay like down because I, I don't want to have a little bit there, but not, not that much. And again, this is just going to help me get a little bit of extra like oomph on the whole thing instead of looking like completely flat it's going to give a little bit more depth so anchor points super super important the the ideal thing would be if we could access like a high poly to get like the ambient occlusion over there that would be great uh but unfortunately we don't have access to that so that's it and like this is the the net as you can see this is what, what my players are going to see in game i like the roughness i think it's a, it's a good roughness um everything everything seems to be working nicely and again as i mentioned like it's not perfect like you can see that the lines are not like completely perfect but it gets the job done. It's it's a, it's a small detail. So I'm going to export these textures. And we're going to export them to our uh, file, of course. So assets. Let's go to Lighthouse. And I'm going to create a new folder here. Let's call this net. And uh, we're going to go there. So we're going to export this as an, an Unreal Engine uh, element. So we're going to say Unreal Engine 4 packed. And then the file type, it's definitely going to be target so that we get transparency. And we just hit export. Now, the, um, the transparency is actually going to live on the base color. So the base color will have the RGB using the color. And then the alpha channel of that texture will have the transparency of the object, which is, again, super important for us. So let's go back into Maya. And before we like have or, or use the texture or anything, I'm going to do the ankle thing. So as you can see, we have two main nets here, like this one right here. And then this one right here, this one has a little bit of a weirder shape. So I'm going to be using Ancloth because Ancloth is going to allow me to create something a little bit nicer here. So I'm going to create a plane. Very important that it's a plane. And then I'm going to scale this because this one goes from like this border like out. So I'm going to scale this so that it roughly matches what I want to do, which is start over here, like at about there. And then I'm going to simulate from here. Like I'm going to be using ankle to simulate this and make this thing fall. So very simple thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to go into uh, effects. I'm going to go into Ankloth, and I'm going to make this a uh, Ankloth, just like that. Now, if I hit play, what's going to happen is the Ankloth is going to start falling. However, there's nothing to interact with the Ankloth right now, so we need to figure something out. But in this case, we, we really don't want an interaction. The only thing we want is for the Ankloth to kind of like, like fall down, right, into, into like a, a couple of points. So here, I, I can't really see where this thing is anchored to. It's, it's kind of weird. 
kind of like going over here to like an invisible point on like on this area which again here's where where concept artists might sometimes just like draw something and not really like care about what they're drawing i think it's just laying on the on the floor uh, actually like maybe it's a very heavy net and it's just like laying there on the floor uh so i'm gonna grab this guy right here i am gonna let's isolate just real quick i'm gonna grab all of the vertices over here and i'm gonna say and constraint transform constraint and what, trans what transform constraint will do is it will create a locator all the way down here on the hyper shader you can't see it because my face is right there uh but there's gonna be a new locator and now when i hit play you're gonna see how the the cloth falls and it will start like just like pivoting from that point right now what i can do here is i can actually add a plane because i don't want to use the the wood i'm just going to use this sort of like plane to simulate my ground so i'm going to go right here and this one that's first transformation um and cloth make a passive collider now we definitely need way more uh, frames here so i'm going to go to like 5,000, so that i give enough time for the cloth to like actually generate what we need and as you can see, it's, it's slowly gonna fall into the ground. And once it hits the ground, you're gonna see how it starts like uh, deforming. Why is it not deforming? That's weird. Let's go back here. Uh, let's freeze transformations. There we go. And end cloth, passive collider. There we go. So again, hit play. And once this thing starts like calculating, it is gonna just like a drop and, and, and touch the ground. So are we getting the effect that we want? Yes, there we go. So now you can see that this, this thing is bending. Now, could, could we have just like modified it and, and bent it ourselves? Yes, of course. Uh, but here's where the fun is gonna, gonna start. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say, um, let me see if I can do this. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Actually, let me go into effects. I'm gonna say end cloth and I'm gonna uh, remove end cloth. So there's no more end cloth. And I'm gonna divide it once, or not divide it, uh, smooth, uh, mesh smooth it. So windows, sorry, um, it's gonna hit space bar. And then here on the mesh menu here, I'm gonna smooth this. So we have a little bit more uh, resolution, that's better. I am gonna definitely delete history, that's gonna help. And uh, let's go back to end cloth, and we're gonna create an end cloth. There we go. So again, this guy, grab all of the vertices, this over here. And actually, I'm not gonna grab all of them, I'm just gonna grab like a couple, so that we get some nice wrinkles as well. So these vertices are also gonna be falling. And I'm gonna say end constraint, transform constraint. And now, if I hit play, as you can see here, we're gonna get that very nice like effect there because not, not all of the vertices are falling and uh, we get this sort of uh, a fall as well. Now, um, again, if we want to add a little bit more like detail, we could grab like this barrel even, let's just delete history or freeze transformation. I'm gonna say end cloth, passive collider, and that's also gonna be a collider now. So once the, the cloth starts like simulating and it gets to that specific area, it's gonna, it's gonna create a little bit of a, of a bend. See how it hits that and it creates just like a nice little effect there. So that's when, here's where, where my elements are going to start like creating a little bit of uh of flow and there we go i think I've, i mean that that looks okay it looks very natural has this very nice effect but i think the the cloth is, is not giving me exactly what i want so um i think here i might just go and and like manually like push this and give it a little bit you know this like cloth feel to it like let me grab like a couple of faces here and just like maybe like move it or something. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? But we just wanna create something interesting. Like I, I really like that little corner over there. Now in ZBrush, we could actually just like push it with dynamics and, and get a nicer, like crisper edge. Uh, here, I think we're gonna have to um, to stick with this. Because, I, mean, I mean, again, the, the net shouldn't be that like high, right? So I, I think this is gonna be good. So let's stick with this one. And then on the next one, we'll, we'll try and see if we can create something a little bit more fancy. Uh, but this one, I'm just gonna leave it like this. And uh, now I'm going to do is I'm going to go end cloth. I'm going to get rid of the end cloth. Oh, before that. No, no, no. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to simulate again. No, I think I just, like, broke this. <laughs> so I, I had to duplicate it beforehand, but I, I forgot. So end cloth. Let's uh, remove the end cloth again. And let's add a new end cloth. So end cloth. Create uh, end cloth. There we go. Now we grab all of these guys. Well, let me just check that this thing is... So it's not falling. There we go, it's falling now. So again, let's grab like the vertices. Let's grab just like even fewer vertices like this, guys. And constraint, and then transform constraint. There we go. Then we need to create another plane for the for the passive collider. I'm gonna lift this one because we're, we're gonna be using Enclo like a little bit more. So let's just create this plane. It's gonna be my passive collider. So again, delete history, first transformation, Enclo, passive collider, and then we just hit play. So now, as you can see, 
this thing's gonna like collide with the barrel still because we didn't delete or change the barrel or anything and we're gonna get this sort of effect now another thing i could do is uh i mean i can increase the gravity if i go all the way down here to our nucleus which again is below my my little image here but there's a, a node called the nucleus you can see i'm selecting it here i can change the gravity so for instance instead of 98 i'm gonna say uh, 9.8 i'm gonna say 98 and that's gonna definitely make it go a little bit faster so as you can see here it goes a little bit nicer uh, I'm gonna grab my floor plane and I'm gonna increase the friction of the floor plane so that when the cloth like sticks to the plane, we, we actually like, get it to stick. It's not sticking. That's really weird. Let's just play. There we go. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit curious about why this is not doing it properly. So let me go end cloth, remove end cloth. Did I not? No, I did. I thought I didn't. Um, like deleted the history but I did so not sure maybe it's the gravity is it too much gravity maybe it's too much gravity so let me go back to the nucleus and we're gonna change this back to like 9.8 which is of course we're gonna make it a little bit slower uh, but it should be nicer yeah so it was the gravity the gravity was kind of like pushing it like back so here, what I can do here, uh, let me go back again, is I can turn on the air. Like I can add a little bit of air to the whole thing. So I'm gonna turn on the, or turn uh, up the air density and I'm gonna turn on up the um, wind speed. And right now it's set to X positive. So it's gonna be pushing it like forward over there. I, I don't wanna do that. I actually wanna go to the other side. So I'm gonna say minus one. And if I do that, the wind's gonna be blowing on the opposite direction. Right, Maya, or am I doing? <laughs> am I doing like a really weird? Maybe it's keeping keeping it straight or something. Let me let me bring the wind speed like down. Let's say minus one on the Y as well, so that we push down. There we go. So technically, what this should give me it's a little bit more like fluidity to the to the whole thing. There we go. See that? So it's kind of like blowing, and that's giving me some nice wrinkles. So I'm gonna go back, wait for the simulation to give me like a nice shape, and at the moment I see a nice shape, I'm gonna stop it. So there, there we go. That's a nice shape because we have a little bit of a, like a bend here and something over here. So now what I forgot to do the first time around, I'm going to hit control D and that's going to give me a duplicate of that thing. So I'm going to delete this one. Um, I'm going to keep the plane. Now it's just a matter of positioning this where it's supposed to be, which is going to be right about there. Let's make sure that these things are there. And here again, here's where we're using Burke's mode. And for instance, like soft selection could be a very nice idea to, to just give this thing a little bit more you know, a little bit more punch in certain areas to make it seem like it's a, like an actual cloth. So for instance here, oh, I'm just gonna like press B and middle mouse click and rotate this around. Just again to, to create a little bit of a, of a weird or different look, right? Like we, we don't want things to be completely, completely flat. Now, I forgot to turn on the Karnak thing again. Sorry about that, guys. So let me turn this thing. I should make like a like a post-it note over here to know that I need to turn on the, the key uh, capture thing. Now, now that we have this, now we can actually go with the... Uh, let me create a layer with this guy. So turn it off. Oh. No worries. I'll, I'll just delete. I'm going to delete the nucleus, actually, and the end rigid so that we don't have any... any Ankle thing. So now on this guy is where I'm gonna uh, assign the new material. So I'm gonna do uh, like a Lambert right now, which is the, the texture, the color, and the, and the alpha. So I'm gonna do, so say file, click here, and uh, we're gonna go, of course, into our assets, lighthouse, net. That's the base color. There we go. And by default, Maya knows that when the base color has a transparency channel, like an alpha channel, it will automatically connect it to the to the transparency channel, as you can see here. And look at this. Pretty cool, right? Now, the only thing I need to do is I need to go to the place to the texture and repeat this a couple more times. So let's say five by five. And at this point, we have this very, very nice uh, net of thing. So this is what we would do. Like this is the, the transparency net that we're gonna be using. Now, I don't wanna keep it just like this. It kinda looks weird. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab like all of the outer edges of my net. Let's get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of soft selection. So B to get rid of soft selection. I have all of my edges. And what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go into um, modify, convert, and it's called uh, edge to curves. Where is it?
No, it's not there. Uh, it's on modeling. Is it on mesh? No, it was here. Select components. No, it was create. Create. I can't remember where it was. Modify, convert, nerves to polys, polygons to subdiv. Here we go, polygon edge to curve. So I hit that one, and as you can see, we're going to create a nice little curve over here. And if you have Maya 2022, you guys remember that we have this very nice uh, sweep mesh thing that we can use to give a border to the whole net like this. And uh, if you remember, we also have our very nice... Um, where is it? The tunnel wood would be. We had the rope. We did have the rope, right? We did the rope. Oh, we. You know what? We did the rope for the for the life saving thing. No, don't worry. Super easy way. I'm just gonna go import. I'm gonna go to my scenes. If I go to the lighthouse, let's look for Maya scenes, and I grab the lifesaver and I hit uh, import. We're gonna import the object. So down here should be the object. We don't need the light setup because we already have the light setup, so just one. And here's the here's the lifeboat thingy that we have. So this one's gonna be on the on the image. They're like up here. So there's like one over there. And then another one over here. And this guys, if you remember, had a material. We had a material called uh, Lifesaver Lambert 2. Let's just call this uh, let's rename this to M a rope. So we know that that's the rope material. We grab this line right here and we assign the new rope material over here. So rope, there we go. So now we have that one. Now we might need to create a different uh, like instance of that material to give it like the proper like thickness and stuff. This one I think I just need to modify the UV because the UV is like this. So one thing we could do is just grab the UV shell and just rotate it like 45 degree angles, even if it's outside of the, of the thing, doesn't matter because it's a fileable texture. And that should make it a little bit better. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit better. It's not great, it's a little bit better. Uh, now on the concept, I do see that these guys have um, like some like plasticky thingies on, on the other side, like more well, probably not plasticky, like, like some sort of like cylinder shapes. Now something very important here, you can see that this thing is not touching the ground, so we definitely need to fix that. I'm gonna combine or at least group both objects and then if I go here, I'm just gonna move this group so that it's on the ground. And then with my R key, I'm just gonna like scale this up a little bit and it's gonna bring the whole thing up. Actually, we might need to combine it now that I think of it. Let's combine center of pivot point. I'm just gonna scale this up so we can bring it to the ground like this. There we go. So now it's sitting right there on the ground. Now, right now, Maya is not giving me like the best possible like uh, shadows for the for the net, unfortunately, um, and that's because of the resolution of the lights. However, in a real, I do think that we're gonna get a nice like uh, net effect uh, down here. And uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, this curve we don't need it anymore, so we can just delete it and look at that. That's a that's a very nice net for the for the whole thing. So technically, if you wanted to, we could just like grab this guy, duplicate it. And then rotate this and position it over here. However, I want to show you another way in which we can uh, do this uh, sort of thing. So how are we doing on time? Okay, we're, we're a little bit over the 20 minute mark. So yeah, because if we scale this, the, the size of the net is going to be different as well. And, uh, and I don't want that. So actually, it doesn't look half bad though. Just taking a look at this one. This one's a little bit, it seems to be like, like forward. It's moving a little bit more. Or it's going more like on the upside. So we go from there to here. So it's like to this one right here. So it's like from here to here, here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a plane, like a new plane. And this new plane, I'm going to I'm gonna bring the divisions all the way down to one. Okay. So it's only one division. And I'm going to position the corners of this plane where I want them to. This is another way in which we can model this sort of thing. So I'm going to go to this pillar over there. And then this edge is going to go right about there. And then this edge is going to go up here to like there. And then this vertex is going to go like down and forward, right? Because it's if we, we, we do have like two points over there. So, so actually, no, actually this one seems to be like over there. And then this one like over there. And then there's like a, like a third line over here. 
So I'm gonna add another point here, to bring it down, and this one's gonna be going to like this specific log over there. There we go. So, so this is another one. And with my cut tool, I'm gonna start adding a couple of cuts here and there, and I'm gonna manually create the sort of uh, effect that I'm uh, expecting to see here, which is kind of like a like a tent, right? So, so these things are gonna be falling slightly and creating a little bit of tension like this. If I hit number three, you can see that we get a very nice, like smooth effect, which is a little bit closer to what we're looking for. Uh, so it's just a matter of like, again, pushing and moving these things around. So I'm gonna say mesh, a smooth, well, the whole thing, of course. So mesh, a smooth, it's gonna create this sort of like surface again. Uh, I think this is good. We might wanna go to like the center of faces, press B, which is soft selection, move the gradient up with a B and middle mouse click. And then just like push this down a little bit more so that we get a little bit less tension overall. Now the cool thing about this, or hopefully what I what I am what I'm hoping this uh, will achieve by by starting with a plane, is that technically the UVs of this thing are still square, like perfectly square. A little bit of distortion there, but it should be like fairly fairly square. So now if I were to assign the net material to this thing, which is number six, I believe. Uh, like the texture shouldn't be that bad. Like there, there might be a little bit of distortion here and there, like here where, where it gets compressed, but uh, we would expect that sort of thing to happen on the net anyway. Uh, and, and this is giving us a nice effect. So again, I'm just gonna grab like this guy right here. Let's get it lower. And this guy right here, let's get it lower. And just play around with the, with the overall shapes over here. Uh, over here, eventually I'm gonna have to, have to find like a way to justify that these things are hanging like this. Let me just like, do like the curvature here, because this thing needs to be like positioned or, or, or pasted or, or something, right? Like it can't just be like that. So I might wanna do something like this. Just like rotate this guys around and uh, yeah, you know, find something. And we can do the same technique that we did with this uh, over here. So just double click that one, modify, convert. We're gonna say um, polygon edge to curve and then select the curve, go create and create a sweep mesh, which is gonna give us this very nice border. Uh, and then just that sweep mesh, we're gonna assign the same uh, rope material, just to get, get a nice sort of like texture going around. And there we go. That's a very quick and easy way to create some sort of like nets going over here. Now, this is just again, one technique. If we want to go super realistic, we can of course uh, spend way more time on this guys and make them look even better. But I think this is gonna give us a nice, nice effect. As you can see the shadow there, it's, it's, it's helping. It, it makes it look a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, uh, once we get in the engine and we actually get like proper shadows going through the transparency, that's gonna look even better. So that's it for this one, guys. Hang on tight. Remember tomorrow and uh, on Sunday, we're gonna have ZBrush tips. So we're gonna be working on that, on those on the, the, the Sunday. I'm actually gonna be recording them um, like right now after I finish recording this one because I'm gonna be away during the weekend. So yeah, just um, just let me know if there's anything I, uh, you need help with. Let us know in the comments. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.